interpreter. Unfortunately for them, the interpreter was unable to communicate with the captives because their language was very different. After joining forces, they came up to two encampments where its inhabitants lay scattered. Separating into three small teams, attacked yelling Portugal and Santiago. The result of the battle was 10 prisoners, with some women and children. And again, the interpreter was unable to communicate with the captives. The reason it was the language they spoke wasn't Moorish, but it's Zanganyana Zara, a name of a Berber people who inhabited Western Sahara. One of the captives was considered a noble based off his social status, who was called Adahu. Zuever writes that he had seen more and better things and visited other lands where he had learned the Moorish language. He provided the interpreter the answers to whatever questions they asked. Tristeo and Gonzalez placed the interpreter and the Moorish woman on shore with the task of speaking with the others regarding a ransom or about traffic of merchandise. Two days later came about 150 Moors on foot and 35 on horses and camels, bringing their interpreter and Moorish woman with them because of their fear of an attempted ambush the Portuguese sell home. While in captivity, Adahu longed to be free. He petitioned his captors to take him back to his land of origin. He declared he would give for himself five or six black moors. Zuero describes the type of moors Adahu was referring, identifying them as moors like the others, but they were slaves according to an ancient custom because of the curse which, after the deluge, Noah laid upon his son Canaan. Adahu also promised the natives could provide news of the lands much further south. The infant obliged granting Gonzalez's request to return and make said ransom, but it also gained more intel about the lands of Prester John. Returning to Rio de Oro, Gonzalez was ready to make ransom. Adahu, clothed in Portuguese style, was led on shore. As soon as he was set free, he forgot quickly all about his promises. After waiting for seven days, they were told by two more to await the others who would come to make ransom. The parlay was headed by Martin Fernandez, the infant's ransomer. Gonzalez received 10 blacks, males and females from various peoples along the coast. The trade also included gold dust, ox hide, and several ostrich eggs. Nuno Tristeo set out again in 1443 and returned with 29 captains with no mention of ransom in them. Say